Hello, this is Miles McKeon here, and I wanted to walk you through signing up for your first Course Sites course as a teacher. www.coursites.com will bring you to this page. And I know that if you're a student, you already have login credentials. However, we're going to need to create a new login uh, by signing up as an instructor. This uh, um, is kind of a safety mechanism created by Blackboard's course sites so that your students won't accidentally sign up as an instructor um, or log in and create courses and so forth. So uh, you will need to create a new um, set of credentials. Um, so I signed in there as starting a new course as an instructor and I input some of my basic information here. As I enter in uh, different um, URL information here, you know, you can pick virtually anything you want. You could uh, use like your uh, initials and your name and so forth. Uh, you could um, title it something different such as uh, McGeehan um, Courses, etc. And these, um, this is basically your website address and so it does need to be an address that no one else in the world has ever chosen before, so that's why you'll get either a check mark or um, or not, and uh, you have to go through a couple different options until you find something that works. And uh, next, we've always got to prove that we're not a um, an, an alien or a robot here, and save and continue. All right, we're going to be taking through a few uh, simple steps here. Uh, if you are importing a course package, this would be something like if you uh, purchase something from McGraw Hill, uh, where you have the whole like uh, U.S. history course uh, container that you want to import. Um, next, you have the option of creating a new course, which is what we're going to choose, and then you also have the option of exploring other courses people have built. So you could take a look at a trial course. Go ahead and choose create new course. We need to give this a course name, and it's important that we uh, think and make a very deliberate course name that we're happy with later. Um, this is uh, some information that's permanent. <clears throat> so let's see here. I'm going to maybe do the school initials, BSD Biology. Now notice uh, the course ID cannot have any uh, spaces, dots, dashes, and so forth. Um, you can only have uh, A to Z characters, so I need to take this space out and it should be okay. Uh, this basically is also going to be used as the URL for this individual course, and uh, so it's important that, uh, that we um, think and make a deliberate uh, course name there. You can also give it a brief description here, my practice biology course. And you can look through some of these different enrollment options. Um, uh, I would just stick with the default, the instructor controlled for now. Save and continue. And next you can, uh, you can browse through a couple different invitation opportunities here. You can have uh, students visit your course to log in. You can enroll them directly from the course homepage or you can invite um, and there's a brief tutorial uh, walking you through how to invite students. We're going to go ahead and skip this for now. Know that you don't have to invite students right up front. There are ways that you can invite them later and if you have time you can peruse through some of these options. Now um, this page is discussing how you can create a Blackboard profile. You would get your name to appear in this top right corner um, and it would also have like a, your moniker or a photo ID of you and uh, it basically 
will give you a profile that populates within discussion prompts and blog prompts and so forth. It's kind of like a, a Facebook-esque type um, icon. And uh, you don't have to do this right now. You can always update it later. And uh, But it is uh, going to make your experience, your user experience, more rich if you take the time at some point to, to get that included. So I'll do it later for right now. All right. Uh, We've got this quick setup guide here that we're going to go through. It's a three-step process, and uh, we're almost done creating our first course. Um, I'm happy with all this, so I'm going to go ahead and choose number two, choose a course structure. What this is showing me, um, it's basically a variety of different templates that they've built regarding the structure of the course, uh, meaning that they have different buttons that are already preloaded, and know that anything that you choose here, you can always change later. You can always create your own buttons and reorganize your buttons and really personalize your page to, the, to how you like it based on the type of course you're teaching. But they do have some great uh, templates here to look through. If I click some of these, it shows me the types of buttons over here on the right that, uh, that would be pre-populated into your course. You'll need to pick one. Um, you can go with the existing menu that's over here on the left or you can choose it by activity and notice you can also scroll down here um, there are a lot of different templates to explore uh, some of the ones I would point out um, you know by unit by topic by subject by module are all pretty decent ones by chapter is a pretty good one um, you can also go like more of like a lab based format experiential learning expedition based constructivism etc etc Next, um, I'm going to choose a course theme. This is basically the color palette, and they have a lot to choose from. Once again, know that you can always change this later. Uh, let's see here, just pick one that I think is uh, good complementary colors. I like the starry night. And uh, go ahead and apply the changes. And voila, we have created a course. If I want to change the course colors, maybe I don't like these, I can go back over here to the little color palette wheel, click on it, and uh, I have a whole, I can very quickly just change it and scroll through and try a variety of different ones. <clears throat> and over here is the uh, the course structure that I chose, all the buttons that I chose. Notice that if I uh, hover over a button on the right side, there's a little drop down arrow. I can click here and I can rename links, hide or delete that button if I want. I can grab on the left side, there's a little up and down arrow, I can move buttons around. And then a little further up, I can add more buttons if I want to. And there's a variety of different types of buttons you can add. <clears throat> Um, you basically just have to explore by clicking to see what the buttons offer. So I would name the button and I would decide what type of button. Uh, this particular one is a link to a tool such as the blog tool, the calendar tool, um, email tool, and so forth. And uh, I can also choose to make this available or not to users. So if there's something that I have in development, I want to hide it for now uh, and then expose it later. That's an option here. And then finally hit submit. I'm going to cancel for a moment. but Notice right here, this one has this little gray box. That means there's nothing in it and it's not available to users currently. So uh, that's how you'll know if, if users can see it or not. And then we can always switch over here on this button, the edit mode. We can switch that to edit mode off. And this is what the students see. So notice some of those buttons that have those gray uh, boxes next to them disappear here. So all the stuff you see now is the student view. And we're back into the teacher view in edit mode. Uh, we can also add some like line breaks and move them around by um, scrolling through some of these different other options like creating a subheader or creating a divider, etc. And I can always refresh the page using this button. One thing I might point out, um, this throws people off sometimes. If you hover right along this edge here, notice that there's an arrow that pops up and I can actually minimize the toolbar on the left or expand it. And so some people sometimes accidentally minimize it and then they think their course is broken and they can't find their buttons anymore. 
Um, and, and so look for that little arrow. Uh, other than that, the last thing I want to point out is that if you do create a button and you populate it with lots and lots of academic content, for instance, years of work, and you delete that button, it deletes all of your work inside of this course area. So be frugal once you create these buttons about deleting things. You can always copy and move stuff within one button into another button, but you have to do that before you go and delete. Speaking from experience. <laughs> so um, I, once again, that's about the only thing you can really mess up in core sites, uh, and the only thing you can really delete and lose is if you delete this button and you have a lot of work in there, um, then it's going to go bye-bye permanently. <clears throat> now, Course Sites also has a help bar right here. If you click this help button, you're going to get a um, access to an IM field and also um, lots of great little instructional videos. They have a, an 800 number you can browse around for and so forth. Um, and, and so they've got some great help on demand. You can call them up or you can IM them and they will give you some pretty much instantaneous feedback. If you ever did delete something that was a major devastating loss, they can pull up an archive of your work, but it does take about a week or two for them to get that uh, accomplished. All right, so I'll go ahead and uh, invite you to browse around what's in these different buttons. <clears throat> this particular button, Course Overview, looks like it's a content page. I, I, um, from, from experience, I can tell that it says Build Content, Assessments, Tools, and Publish Content. So, you know, maybe I want to rename that course, um, or rename this uh, button, I'm sorry, to view, to say Course Content or assignments, or um, et cetera, et cetera. And now I can start building material within the course. To build content, I can add information. Usually the, uh, the things that you find under the build content tab are pieces of information you want to give out to your students, uh, but it's a more of a one-way street. It's uh, information like such as videos or text, stuff that you want students to read, uh, and so forth. It's like your digital textbook. There's a lot of different options about what type of information you can provide them. This is not a two-way street, though, when you build um, stuff with the content button. This is not a, a place where you would collect work back from students, necessarily. So to collect work back, you would build some type of assessment. And that would be something such as like an assignment or a test. So let me go ahead and show you building an assignment. You would simply give the assignment a name. You could give students instructions. I prefer to always write out objectives and directions. You can also even give like a bulleted or number lists here. Uh, you can also you know, underline, um, bold, italicize, change font, change size of font, add different color palettes, different uh, color to the, the text and so forth. And then notice that I can expand this and I get a lot more options too. I can center, align, uh, I can do superscript and subscript, etc. There's a spell check tool. And these are some very interesting ones here. I can even do a webcam so I could record talking to the computer and the, the students could play a short little video uh, from the instructor. I can also attach files right into the directions. I can attach images from my computer right into the directions uh, or a short video from my computer. There's a math editor, so if I'm typing in functions. And furthermore, I've got a bunch of mashups. I can include stuff from Flickr, from SlideShare, MBC content. Google Docs and YouTube video. This is interesting, the Google Docs, if I insert a Google document, which is a, um, a document that is like auto-saving in my Google Drive, uh, if I make an update on my Google Drive document, it automatically is connected here and automatically updates in my course, so it's, it's live instantly to my class. So that's a really nice feature. However, the, loading a Google Doc does take some time for course sites to connect with Google Drive and so forth. Uh, I would suggest 
using a fast internet um, when you're trying to connect to Google Doc for the first time. And then after that, you know, it's just always live. YouTube video is great. You can embed videos right into your directions and so forth. Uh, and they're streamed in really quickly. Uh, there's just a lot of different functions in here that I would uh, suggest you, you peruse and figure out what they're all about. HTML code is great if you know anything about uh, web development and uh, web design. You can actually type in your own code and, and uh, or you can borrow an embed code from some other service and, and paste it in there. Uh, if that's over your head, don't worry about it. Um, but it's, uh, it's really nice if you know a little bit about embed codes that you can include that in your directions. All right, if I'm happy with my directions, I can come on down. Maybe I want my students to download a, a file. Um, maybe there's like a lab document. The students are going to work off of a document in my science lab. Or there's a template, like a graphic organizer I want them to use in my social studies class as like a note-catching guide as they're going through some content. So I can browse my computer. This is just like, you know, attaching a file in an email. It's really simple. I can also add points to it. So let's make this a 10-point assignment. I can add a rubric here so I can create a new rubric. The rubrics are really nice uh, with respect to uh, once I build the rubric, when I come back through and grade student work, uh, I can just simply click on the different uh, rows and columns within the rubric and it automatically assesses and gives points to the students and um, collates a grade. Availability, uh, if this is ready to be viewable by students, I click this button, it's, by default it's already on. If I want to make this hidden for a while because I don't want students to see it just yet, I can uncheck it. Number of attempts. I usually give students unlimited number of attempts. Uh, I've been caught too many times where if I choose the allow single attempt option and the student uh, is trying to complete the assignment and you know has interrupted uh, internet service, maybe they close their computer and go from one classroom to the next or, or whatnot. Um, they get kicked off the internet while they're at a coffee shop because their time runs up on the two hour window. Then they try to redo the assignment and they're blocked uh, because you only gave them one single attempt. So then they, it's a pain for me to go and undo the attempt and so forth as the instructor. So I would just suggest always give them unlimited attempts or at least uh, several attempts. You could even limit the availability, like they only get one week to complete this assignment, and then it's uh, taken off automatically. Track number of views. This is an instructor thing where you can see how long the student spent on this assignment, how long they spent, or if they ever viewed it, if they opened the assignment, etc. Uh, it's kind of a, um, a tracking program that gives you information uh, that you could use if a student is claiming that they, they did the work, and, and you can... Um, see if they're honest or not, I guess. Due dates is a pretty important one. I like to add this. This will automatically populate a reminder on the, on the, on the course site's calendar. So definitely include this one. You can click on the calendar and pick a date, pick a time, and so forth. And it'll even give reminders to the students if that's what they elect. And then uh, you can even make it so that only groups of students see this particular assignment. I don't have a group built yet, but you could, if you had differentiated groups, you could assign specific groups. And then uh, choose submit. So this is my first assignment and I'm choosing submit. Remember an assignment is like a two-way street. Next when a student comes to this, let's me get, let me go to the student view for a minute. Notice uh, that banner with all the different um, instructor information about adding content, adding assignments goes away. This is just a clean version that the students see. They would click on the title of the assignment to uh, complete the assignment now. And so now I'm looking at it as a student they would scroll down, they see the due date, the points possible, and so forth. Uh, they can add information back in their submission by typing in um, some content, or they can browse and upload a file, uh, such as a Word document or something they completed for the assignment, and then they hit submit. When they do that, it'll give them a time and date stamp uh, representing that they completed the, uh, the work and so forth. So that's uh, pretty simple. The first assignment is built. And we're going to hold off here and not uh, go too much farther into all these different uh, types of tools that you can add, uh, discussion boards, blogs, wikis, etc., etc. We're going to leave that for later weeks in the course, but just wanted to give you a, a brief intro on how to get started in your course, um, how to modify buttons, and how to get in and start just uh, tinkering around with building some content in your course. Great, we'll see you again here soon.